Coming up in today's show, highlights of Prime Minister Andrew Holness's budget presentation. Jamaica will be at its best when its most talented graduates see a career in public service as among their highest possible ambitions. And the plan of action to groom young people to serve in the public sector, plus the drive is still on to search for and destroy mosquito breeding sites. Hello, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for tuning in to Jamaica Magazine. We have a lot to share with you, so let's get started. Wait, who that? Colin! Hey, what's going on? You know, sir, I'm on my way to go look about the farm work program. Aye. I'm mean, love to do the farm work program there, you know. But remember, I serve a five-year prison sentence for a minor crime. Them can clear it, you know? Yes, Colin can get his record expunged. Expungement is having a conviction removed from your criminal record after certain specifications have been met. Visit the Criminal and Civil Justice Division in the Ministry of Justice for more information. I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Thursday, June 2. The Planning Institute of Jamaica PIOJ says Jamaica may well be emerging from a trend of uncertainty and unpredictable fluctuations in its economic performance. PIOJ's Director General Colin Bullock made the comments yesterday during a media briefing to review the country's economic performance in the January to March 2016 period. He reported that the Jamaican economy grew by an estimated 0.9% in the first quarter of this fiscal year, while growth in the range of 0.5 to 1.5% was projected for the April to June quarter. Mr. Bullock said those factors following four quarters of positive growth accounted for the positive outlook of economic stability. In line with that, he said the PIOJ was expecting real GDP to grow by 1-2% to for the 2016-2017 fiscal year, based on increases in both the goods producing and services industries. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says his administration will be tackling unemployment by revamping its labour market information system. He asserts that more persons would be gainfully employed if the state works with employers to provide training for job seekers. Governments have to help firms to be able to spot the changes in technology and respond and to help them to train their existing staff to adjust. He adds that if government is more responsive in surveying the labour market, more persons will find employment. That alone could knock off one or two percentage points from our unemployment rate. The Prime Minister was speaking on Friday at the opening of the Jamaica Employers' Federation Convention in Montego Bay. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the government intends to take bold steps in tackling crime in Jamaica. We don't intend to do it in a dictatorial fashion. It must be reasonable. We intend to engage the public to be a part of the conversation about what is necessary. Um, to change in our justice system, in our law enforcement system, law enforcement system to bring about the reduction in crime that everyone wants. The Prime Minister was speaking with Ian Boyne on JIS TV's Issues and Answers program. Mr. Holness said the Ministers of National Security and Justice, as well as the Attorney General, would be elaborating on the move to amend the Bail Act and other relevant justice issues in the upcoming sectoral debate. In his recent budget debate presentation, the Prime Minister announced plans to amend the Bail Act to introduce mandatory minimum sentences for specified crimes and for murder suspects to be denied bail under certain circumstances. There is a sense that justice is being delayed and therefore people feel justice is denied. The sense that criminals can act without fear and the public is growing increasingly tired of this. The Senate has passed amendments to the Jury Act to clear up discrepancies regarding attorneys' right to reject a certain number of potential jurors without stating a reason. The bill, which was piloted by Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, was passed in the Upper House on Friday. It rectifies previous amendments made to the Jury Act, which came into force on February 1 of this year. This amendment now removes the disparity which existed with the difference in peremptory challenges which prevented such matters from being joined. Clause 3 
treats with the acceptance of the verdict, of a verdict of not less than five jurors to be accepted. This therefore eliminates the issue of a split decision, for example, a 5-2 or 6-1 decision, rendering a jury to be deadlocked. The bill was approved by the House of Representatives on Wednesday, May 25. Persons intending to travel to yellow fever affected areas now have greater access to vaccinations for the disease. The Ministry of Health has increased the number of days that yellow fever vaccinations are administered in the public health sector. The decision was made based on the recent increase in the number of persons attending health centers for yellow fever vaccination in the wake of the ministry ramping up its public education due to the outbreak in Angola and ongoing transmission in the Americas. Yellow fever vaccinations will now be administered at the Slypen Road Comprehensive Health Center in Kingston on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Montego Bay Type 5 Health Center in St. James is offering the vaccine every Monday, Wednesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The cost is $1,500 per vaccine and the new schedule came into effect on Monday, May 30. Persons are advised that the vaccines need to be administered at least 10 days prior to travel. In order to reduce waiting time, persons, especially groups, are being asked to make appointments. The yellow fever virus is transmitted by the bite of infected mosquitoes such as the Aedes aegypti, the same vector that transmits the chikungunya, dengue and Zika viruses. And finally, the Ministry of Health will be taking steps to make it easier for individuals and charitable organizations to make donations to the health sector. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the unit in the ministry which deals with such contributions will be strengthened over the next two to three months. We should make it difficult for people who want to do good to do good. And so one of the commitments that we have made, I have made as the minister, is that we're going to address that by adding more personnel to a unit within the ministry and by coordinating more efficiently with other agencies like Customs to support the freer flow of contributions to the development of the health sector. Dr. Tufton was speaking at a recent function where he received a donation of wheelchairs from the Errol Rattray Evangelistic Association and Jamaica Mobility. Between this month to July, we will give away the first set of the 550 wheelchair. And between September, October, November, we will give away the next set of 550. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thanks for watching. If you are not thinking of owning a house or building a house, now is the time to do it. That's because come July 1, there will be lower interest rates on National Housing Trust mortgage loans, as well as new home grant conditions. The information is all inside this abbreviated version of Prime Minister Andrew Olness's budget presentation. Government must operate on parallel tracks, maintaining fiscal discipline while at the same time exercising creativity in stimulating economic growth and creating jobs for our people. This government will have a laser-like focus on economic growth. Critical plan of the growth agenda is to reduce the uncertainty of government action, reduce the time for decisions, flatten the hierarchical structures, and speed up the bureaucratic processes. The Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation will be augmented with the establishment of the National Policy Office that will drive economic growth policy. Jamaica will be at its best when its most talented graduates see a career in public service as among their highest possible ambitions. The government will be pursuing public-private partnerships as a strategy to boost economic activity.
and we are going to put together a new RFP to get the ball a rolling on waste of energy. The refinery is critical to solving a lot of our own local inefficiencies. The cabinet will soon review the foreign trade policy. The government will appoint a Caribbean Community Review Commission aimed at positioning the country to take full advantages of the benefits under that organization. This government, Mr. Speaker, is serious about debt reduction. The government of Jamaica has commenced discussions with the World Bank with a view of pursuing debt reduction through innovative debt swap schemes. We will not stop it. The government intends to apply the proceeds of divestment to either increasing capital expenditure or towards reducing debt. It takes too long to pay taxes in Jamaica. The government will complete phase three of the implementation of the Revenue Administration Information System. The tax system will be overall and reform to promote reliability of taxes, equity in taxation, and economic efficiency. We have come to this house, Mr. Speaker, and we have delivered 1.5 plus. Government will intensify the implementation of shared services models where some core functions will be provided centrally to gain efficiencies and cost savings while offering a higher standard of service to the people of Jamaica. This government will seek to accelerate the implementation of the National Identification System, which falls directly in the office of the Prime Minister. As Prime Minister, I am not going to allow crime, in particular murders, to derail the economic growth and prosperity of the country. And I am proposing, leader of the opposition and spokesperson on national security, that we, we somehow have to meet one-on-one -on -one and determine how we make a political pact against crime in this country. If you are not thinking of owning a house or building a house, now is the time to do it. The government will adjust the current home grant policy. The National Housing Trust proposes to increase the loan limit from 1.5 million to $2 million for a house lot loan, effectively July 1, 2016. Over the next three years, the NHT will partner with private and public sector entities to develop over 10,000 housing solutions for contributors. I want to move Jamaica to believing that we are worthy of robust economic growth, that we are worthy of prosperity. Indeed, we are destined for prosperity. the Caribbean territory, but we now want that virus to set pan we. So make sure it's not stagnant water inside, and mash up all my state of breathing inside. Poor, poor.
the daddy tin them where you dash way and change the water like your vase every day. So later, dispose of your garbage proper. You know them, they tin the we turn green backer. Tour your community and tour your yard for suppress mosquito. We have to go hard dash with old tire turn over drum pan for prevention is the greatest weapon. And special shout out to pregnant ladies. Protect yourselves and protect your babies. Draw for your zapper and your mosquitoes. Pray we fiddle all that we can for keep them away. How we now was it me? And on that note, Mrs. Shireen Huntley-Jones from the Ministry of Health will tell us how important it is to get rid of mosquito breeding sites. Mosquitoes are undoubtedly annoying with their irritating sound and stinging bite. But there are more compelling reasons we'd rather not have them around. Several species are carriers of diseases and a threat to human health. Of most significance to Jamaica is the Aedes aegypti mosquito, known to transmit dengue fever, chikungunya, yellow fever, and the Zika virus. Only female mosquitoes bite, doing so to get the blood they need for egg production. And therefore, only female mosquitoes transmit these viruses. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is what we call a timid feeder. So she's easily disturbed when feeding. It means that in one night, she may feed on several persons before she takes her complete blood meal. Each time she feeds, she secretes that substance. And in the secretion of the substance, the pathogen is passed on. So in one night, one female Aedes aegypti mosquito is able to infect more than one person. The female Aedes aegypti mosquito is a prolific breeder. One female Aedes aegypti mosquito is able to lay up to 200 eggs each time she lays her eggs. So one mosquito can populate an entire area. The lifespan of the mosquito is around three weeks and the entire cycle from egg to adult can occur in as little as seven to eight days. Female mosquitoes are ready to mate within a few hours after reaching their adult stage, and males are usually ready within 24 hours. This mosquito prefers cleaner waters for the female mosquitoes. She will lay her eggs in water, and for the Aedes, it would be water which is in and around the household. So while there are a number of things we can and should do to prevent being bitten, the most effective way to prevent the spread of diseases by these mosquitoes is to prevent their breeding. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is a mosquito that breeds in a containerized environment. They do not breed in rivers and drains, but they breed in containers that can be found in and around where persons dwell. So come with us and let us show you some of those breeding sites. This is a typical disc drainer that we find in most homes. And under most disc drainer is a tray that collects the water that comes off the dishes. And believe it or not, we have found breeding in several homes in these disc drainers. Yes. You can see that we have water that has settled. If this water does not evaporate quickly, it can lend itself to the breeding of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. So you not only have to empty the disc drainer, but you have to scrub to remove those eggs. This is the typical saucer that we will find under a plant. The rain has recently fallen, it has collected water. And right now it is steaming with the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Do you have some of these in your home? Aedes aegypti prefers water that is a little bit on the cleaner side and it's found in a shaded environment. So what should we do with something like this? It's quite simple. You need to throw away the water. And if these containers are not being used, you have to keep them turned down so they're not able to collect water. If you have them under your plants, we ask that you bore holes in them so that it will not collect water. Do you have these in your homes? We find these in a lot of hotels and business places. And we ask those persons, check these bird baths or any ornamental things like these you have in your garden to ensure that they are not breeding the Aedes aegypti mosquito. There are things like this thrown down in person's backyard. Old equipment, old furniture, old fixtures that are taken from homes, especially during construction. These are also able to hold water. 
and if they are holding water and sit for a while in the environment, they will also breed mosquitoes. And so we have found breeding in wheelbarrows, in old refrigerator, in old sinks such as this one. And we ask persons, if you are throwing out these, please ensure that they are positioned in such a way that they will not collect water. Many persons, when they do have their drums, most times they have missed, they don't, the drums do not have any covers. So there is a mesh cover which is so designed to replace the missing covers. It is lightweight and what we do is just simply slip it over and the mesh is so designed mosquitoes will not be able to go through this mesh to get to the water. So this is the ideal way. One of the benefits also of this mesh is that even when rain does fall, water will go right through it. What is the habit we want you to develop? Once every week, search for and destroy the breeding sites of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. This is one time we don't want you to laugh. Staying safe on the road is a serious thing. Mr. Taxi driver and bus driver, take time now, man. People, so one stop driver and come off. Cyclists, motorcyclists, pedestrians, all road users using the head. Only for you, cell phone and drive. No, man. Idiot thing that. Road safety is no laughing matter. Because we want you to be around and, and laughing, laughing with, with us. us. For a long, long time. time. A message from the National Road Safety Council and National Health Fund. The National Road Safety Council has reported that 164 persons have been killed in 141 road crashes since the start of the year. And with June being observed as Road Safety Awareness Month, it is cautioning motorists and pedestrians to be extra careful in how they use the thoroughfares. The JIS also endorses the appeal and coming up, we show you how road crashes can alter one's life. At the time of the crash, Falasha was only 21 years old, a first degree, first year university student. She held a full-time job and was very involved in numerous church, sports and voluntary activities. And without notice, all that changed in an instant. It took less than 10 seconds and one driver's misjudgment, one driver's decision to speed, one driver's choice to be reckless, one minute selfish act of dangerous driving, and in less than 10 seconds, most of my bones were broken, my whole being shattered, my body wrecked, my life mar radically marred and completely changed forever. For Lasha awoke to find herself in hospital, hooked to numerous machines, with tubes and needles invading her body. Her head, hands and legs were screwed with nails and supported by metal poles. She was crippled by excruciating pain and no amount of painkillers seemed to give any relief. It was at that point that she wished she had died. Since then, she has undergone 15 major surgeries to bring her body to a point of rehabilitation, including the amputation of her right leg. 
for the last four years instead of like my peers pursuing educational, social and economic dreams and goals, I have had to fight and struggle to find recovery where my dreams have been forcibly pushed on a ledge so far from my reach. Because of one driver's choice not to observe road safety, I'm unable to cross the streets or be around moving cars for any amount of time without being overwhelmed by the sense that I'm about to be hit down. I am afflicted with insomnia, panic and anxiety attacks and I'm daily haunted by graphic flashbacks of this accident in my waking hours and in the little sleep I get nightmares. And the pain continues. One driver's choice to disobey road rules has cost Falasha the loss of family and friends who have found it difficult to come to terms with the sudden transformation of her life. And there's more. I have lost relationships and suffered devastating heartbreaks because these guys could not and eventually refused to deal with or see behind, beyond the destruction of my being and thus walked away. After the accident, I had to drop out of university, and to date, I have not been able to resume. If it had not been for one driver's choice to be reckless on our roads, Falasha would have graduated in July 2012. And instead of having a student loan debt, she has incurred hospital expenses of more than $5 million and growing, and has to find over $30,000 monthly for medication, crippling her personal savings and dashing her hopes of finding employment. Because of one driver's choice to not observe road safety, whenever I apply for a job, my visual damages are what are seen and my credits, qualifications, takes back page. And they create an endless list of cans and render me disabled and incapable without a chance, making it manifold times harder in a job market that is already very overpopulated. There are no words to adequately express to you all that one driver's disregard for road safety has done and continues to do with my life. I stand here today only because of the grace and goodness of God. And I am begging you, please do not be the next driver to disregard road safety and shatter another person's life. Don't be the next driver to true irresponsible and dangerous driving. Choose to destroy another life. For CSEC exams, visit EL Jam's virtual learning environment for free study notes, videos, and quizzes in 11 subjects. www.elearnjavle.org. We have come to the end of today's show, but don't forget to visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for more updates. Keep sending your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or tweet at JIS News. Our team will be back tomorrow with another show. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.